Welcome pool fans checking in from around the world. We're here at Caesars Southern Indiana, just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. It's the 24th annual Derby City Classic. Behind me, it's a book to the max. We're doing bank pool, one pocket, nine ball. But in front of me, 16 of the greatest players on the planet. It's invitational only, playing on this super tight five by 10 diamond. We call it the Bigfoot. Ladies and gentlemen, have you enjoyed the pool so far here at Derby? It's pretty amazing what we've seen so far. We're in round one action of the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge, and it's time to meet the players for this next match. First up, he's back-to-back -back US Open champion, World 9 and 10 Ball champion, 2000's Player of the Decade, and member of the Billiards Hall of Fame. Sponsored by Mez, Exceed, Tom, Alpha Coin, and Shadow Tight from Helsinki, Finland. Make some noise for the Iceman, Mika. Eminem. And his opponent, third at the World Pool Masters, two-time European Tin Ball Champion. He's sponsored by Predator, KGHM, and Erg Buren from Lubin, Poland. Make some noise for Mieszko <coughs> Futinski. <laughs> Lagging for the break, our referee is Mr. Ricky Bryan, sending it up to the skybox, Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones. Thank you, Derek. Hello and welcome to our continuing coverage of the Bigfoot 10-ball event. Jeremy Jones is here with us, and I'm Mark Wilson. Jeremy, we know Mika Eminen. Tell us something about his opponent. Yeah, Miesko Fortunski of Poland. Uh, quite a few great players from Poland, and uh, no coincidence why the World 9-ball Championship has moved there just shortly after this event. But definitely one of the top guys from Poland. Kind of the guy I like from Poland as far as, like, uh, that athletic ability, really natural, uh, great ball pocketer, a lot of power. Had a little bit of like a, you might say at times got a little frustrated, over frustrated during matches and, and even players talked about how talented he was, but maybe the head holding him back at times. He's got that cleared up in my opinion the last couple of years and still kind of waiting for him for, to really get that big, big win. And of course, Mika Eminem, that name speaks for itself. And one thing I saw, I'm sorry, uh, during the practice was uh, Fortunski seemed like he was a little off with the speed of the table a little bit. And we saw it with the lag, kind of overhit it. So, Really, the super firepower, though, the shot-making ability is uh, un not maybe unmatched, right? He's up there. Yeah, he's up there as far as, uh, as, far as I think, anyways, Fortunski. He's one of the elite ball pocketers in the game, very athletic. Sturdy build on him. Yeah. Good square hit to open up the match. The 10 ball does not win on the break in case it would ever go in. All ball fouls. Race to 11. No jump cues. 30 second shot clock. Well, up here is the one plays. He's got to move the rock. He's going away from the two. Maybe he gets in between the 10 9 for the two and the side. No, oh. he took a long shot here on the two. Pretty opening. Uh, cut there into the side pocket and then you know that shot plays tougher when you know you can't get close to the two ball too absolutely you know, it does yeah. it's psychological but it's annoying that you know that you have to just settle for something that's distasteful and then you have a slightly awkward shot anyway yeah it's kind of like you know when you're playing pool you got to try and do the thinking end and then whenever you get down on the ball it becomes just swinging the cue and it's hard to shut off the mental beautiful Beautiful shot. And you might label Fortunski like you like to say sometimes, some of those guys that are still trying to get some of the seasoning. You know, you brought it up about filler before Jason Shaw. Incredible pocketing the ball, but at one point their tactical play was probably could have been a little better. Mm -hmm. um, I think Fortunski's a little bit still in that category, you know. But that's just experience. Right. That's much easier to obtain than straight shooting. Yeah, and, but. you know, we're hard <laughs> critics up here, especially with these guys. So it's not like he's bad tactically or anything like that. That's not oh, That's no. not really possible. It's just uh, maybe lacking a few decisions here and there. And Yes, when we reference something, it's only in regards to absolute world class. It's not just regular pro players or something. Right, these right. are the elite of the elite. And, you know, when you watch him, it's a textbook swing. And much like you said, Shaw, Filler, both left-handed. Here's Fortunski, left-handed, smooth as could be. 
And you can see he's uh, very accurate. That elbow, upper arm stays up. <clears throat> yeah, no he, wasted motion in the swing. Yeah, and he kind of does that, you know, before he gets down, really. Kind of pretty simple with his decisions for the most part. Relies on the talent. And really, technically, kind of what, what I really like, which is, of course, not a fast backswing, but not too slow and controlled. Very natural and relaxed pullback, which I think is the best transition. Ooh, this is, this is kind of, you know, the bridge is one thing, but this is kind of what I saw a couple times when he was practicing. Maybe the speed got away from him just a little bit. This is where the 10-footer comes in, too, because where the cue ball laid, he could have played that naturally on a 9-foot table, but with the 10-footer, he had to get the bridge out to go diagonal across the table from just, just past the center. So Yeah, and uh, shooting back to a blind pocket. Beautiful. Super, super Beautiful. center. and. You know, Smooth. when Derek was opening up the match, he said, yeah, they call this the Bigfoot. And I was thinking about it. That one extra foot, it really is big, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it seems to magnify exponentially how difficult this game is. Well, Fortunsky wins the leg, quality break, break and run out. Gives you about three steps of momentum. It's a big deal. The person that wins the first rack of a set goes on to win that set 56.4% of the time. Wow. Yeah, and if you lose the first rack, you win that set 43.6% of the time. I did not realize that first rack is so vital, but it's one of these things where I used to be like, well, it's a race to 11, I'll just take it easy here. I'm, I'm just going to go for a uh, hard bank, and then the score would be 10 10. And then that same type of shot that I was kind of lazy yeah, right. and sloppy <laughs> about, okay, in the last rack, I'm now playing safe. You yeah. know, and if I would have played it harder to begin with rather than think it's a long match, I wouldn't have been 10 10. But. Well, it's kind of, yeah, it's just, you can look at it like your own career or whatever, but you think in a one-match setting, one game doesn't matter. But if you look long-term, like you said, 56 point whatever it is, 4%, yep, 56 percent, uh, it's going to show up. Now, Mika, who's played uh, quite a few of these 10-ball events, the 10-foot 10, 10 table, he's, he's made some runs, too, as well. Absolutely. I think the oh, final four last year at the international, and he has super firepower. If he gets out of whack though with his timing, because sometimes he doesn't have a final pause, or most of the time he doesn't have a final pause before he delivers. If he's on, it's untouchable. And if he gets in front of you, oh boy, it's like a house on fire. But if he struggles, then sometimes his timing gets awry, and then his attitude sometimes diminishes too. Absolutely, and. Uh you know, to be fair, me and Mika had quite a few battles um, during our career. A lot of Moscone Cup matches that were huge and um, sometimes not the easiest of matches to play. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll be honest, we weren't like best close friends, right? But we mm -hmm. talked a lot in the last couple of years. You know, as we get older a little bit, things kind of resolve and respect each other a lot. But uh, we talked about... We both brought up the same thing about his game to each other. It was just what seemed like easy shots. He just, he, he you know, he doesn't pause at the cue ball like you said, but he even gets quicker uh, and maybe less pre-strokes on the easy ones. Mm -hmm. You know, being such a great player for so long, he just rarely ever missed a ball, it seemed like. And and he said the same things, that if I can, I can really address the easy shots or the easier shots like I do the tough ones, um, I think my game's pretty close to being there. I couldn't agree more with his self-assessment that when I watch him, he doesn't miss the toughest things. It's the ones that you'd think like, well, that's unusual that he didn't get better position or he didn't get on, you know, he missed that ball or whatever it might be. Yeah, and like Fortunsky, which I think you're going to see a lot of guys like that in the future, very athletic, uh, just, you know, look like they could probably play several sports very well. I think Mika was that kind of guy as well, very athletic player. Years ago, uh, Fedor Gorst was talking about the, the Polish players, the young, and he said there was going to be five or six that were going to ultimately be world champions, you know, and yeah. here we are. You know, you got Yasheshin coming up later today. You got uh, Wichter, Zelensky, you yeah. know, right? Yasheshin, uh, he's like a, a veteran for that, <laughs> that yeah. those Polish and, guys. He's like the grandpa out of all of them, and he's a world-class player and still in the prime of his career. The funny thing is, a couple of the older Polish guys, not near the training it looks like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. like the younger ones coming up now, they're very uniform to what they're doing. And you'll watch uh, 
Yushishin. He's uh, he's got a really long bridge. A little different with the cue ball at times, but sure can pocket the ball. And he's had some nice runs here of late. Now Mika, I like the pace he's taking this second rack here. Sometimes when Mika gets you know through the tough shot, like the three in the side, he can really get going around the table and. I like what he looks like so far. Ooh, that one kind of squeaked in. So he can pull this back. He could kind of play one rail off the eight. He could play two rails. There's a lot of options. The ten's just a little funny. So, you know, you don't want to be coming from just a little bit of an angle. It's kind of like hardly any angle or quite a bit of angle like this. He's going to come on the good side of the of the 10. Stand very heavy on the 8. Mm. Four and eighth inch pockets. And we figured to see some balls hang up or rattle that we might be uh, surprised by. And Mika ties things up. Two really we'll nice opening as innings we head by into each player. Three. Ringside, I see Phil Wyndham down there. Pretty nice audience here very early in the day. Second day of the Derby City. And for a lot of the spectators, players, and of course fans, whatever you want to, however you want to label them, sometimes we got to remind ourselves it's only day one. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Derby, you can get going. There's so much going on, uh, going mm -hmm. on late as well throughout the evening. Got to learn to pace yourself around uh, <laughs> I know it. Caesars. And here's, here's me and you. We're up all day. <laughs> yeah, we're up late and everything else. So, But we got coffee and we're good. Yeah, we got world-class pool and Fortunski to break here in game number three. Another good square hit. Three ball finds the side pocket. The one ball's going to hang up. Ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> treacherous here and, and no way to push out no <laughs> you, you got to push out to swerve or, or something like that Ugh, this yeah is I mean, real ugly really ugly you can't just give in though there's no, no and when you're <clears> on a ball it's hard to tie another ball up right so, yeah you know the other part of this is when you kick this that one's so deep it's so easy to scratch behind it yeah he's got to really float this just a real depth touch oh, he's going hard that was like uh really like limited the chance of success and now our first ball in hand in the match the four i can't tell if the eight the eight is sitting on the point in a funny manner there mm -hmm. mark uh, mm -hmm. makes the four a little peculiar i think or it could now ball in hand on the two or excuse me ball in hand on the one getting on the two one was so deep almost overlooked it and this is a funny shot just because it you is. need touch. It's not so much about the line that's that bad, but you need some good touch. He's got to take a chance. You know, He's going to draw the ball. I don't know if we can. Yeah, he does opt for that. But, you know, if we could get the overhead real quick, this is not a bad route, Jeremy, to go here, here, and come up because you spend so much more time in the good zone as opposed to trying to float it across One like rail. this because if that speed gets funny, you can get it back here. Yeah, you got to go inside the six like he's doing and but, just take your medicine. And pretty good, but now he's got to deal with a lot Absolutely. of clutter coming across there where the other way you had a better chance to be in the better zone, but uh, in any event. And I thought that the uh, that's what made the eight a little funny for him. If he yes. gets a little off angle on the two, it has to shoot maybe a long combination on the four eight. 100%. Th this is a real awkward layout here. It's not bad. If th Say the four is hanging over the pocket, then this is probably the better approach. Oh, boy. Okay, he got a good kiss on the five. He could have hit a little less of the ball and either been behind the five or the ten. But now this is very missable, and number two, it's very difficult to get position on the secondary object ball. 
Yeah, and this is the one you want to play with a hair more speed because you can get a friendly double kiss on the eight and still pocket the ball. You don't want to be babying it too much. And that's where holding position. Now Mika asking uh, just for a little more still bodies there in the, in the audience. Oh, see? That's an awkward ball right there. If that ball's off the point, there's really no way to miss the eight, it seems like, even on the tie pockets. But. And this one's a little awkward, too. Just The good thing is, for Fortunski, is the, that side of the table's so clear, right? You can take a little bit mm -hmm. of a gamble hitting this a little harder. He didn't want to roll it, end up on yeah. top of the four, or something right. like that. So. Get the cue ball free. And this guy's such a straight shooter, he's not afraid to take on a little more distance anyway. Yeah, and this is smart. He's looking to come one rail down the table, just use a little touch. I don't see the reason to involve the second rail. You can if you want. Could get away from you that way, though. Yeah, I like the one rail position here. Well, I think by staying on the same side of the table as the six is, it's much easier to get position on the six from this direction as opposed to the other way if you fall a little funny. Yeah, and, you know, they were both doable, of course, but when you... You're really just kind of going forward with the cue ball. That's when your touch with your speed control is usually at its best. I think it was the... Of course, he had a big world uh, pull masters last year getting to the semifinals for Tunski before getting beat by uh, Al Yusuf, Abdullah Al Yusuf. I expected to be here, but we're missing a few players with the World Nine Ball Championships coming up next week, or the week after this, excuse me. I have to tell you, I thought he should float the cue ball forward another foot so he could reach it, because now I think he's going to have to go with the bridge. Um, yeah. Extension, okay. Extension, but okay. I think he probably didn't put that little thought in there. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't play it all the time, you're going to miss that occasionally. On the 10-footer, he's, he's playing it a little bit like a 9-footer, and you can't fault them because they rarely get to play on the 10-footer. But yeah. moving the, forward, he would probably rather be another foot further down table so he could reach it handier. Yeah, and that ball down the rail, if it was a little more difficult where he had to look at it a hair, he probably recognizes that. But it was kind of easy shot, right? Got down and shot it. and Uh-oh. Okay. Just barely. Both of them almost <laughs> overcut the 10 there. I had a minor heart palpitation there. Yeah. It's like, oh, two to one now. For two games front. to one. Yeah, and Fortunski, like three, I said, three, keeps it very we'll simple, relies on his ball pocketing, but really has a great touch as well. Fun guy. Pretty emotionless. Uh, at the table these days, like I said, and he would even tell you himself that uh, at times he would let a little mistake get the best of him too much. I played him a couple times actually and saw that well, was five years ago, maybe six years ago. Mika's the same, right? I mean, like you said that, mm -hmm. you know, we can all get that way, by the way, but, you know, it's something that you know about players from time to time. Mm-hmm. Oh, Meek is very temperamental. If something's bothering him, you know, in the audience or his opponent or the referee or the table or whatever, you you will definitely know about it. Yeah, the, you know, it's not the best sequence of events for Mika that he had, in his mind anyways, that, you know, he had to say something to a fan and then he missed that ball, right? I mean, that's the kind of thing that can wear on Mika a little bit now. It's mm -hmm. early. Mm -hmm. So I think he shakes that off. Boy, but if that ball got lost in the side, he got a friendly kiss on the five or else the cue ball was gone. Right, with a nice open layout here, too. Yeah, it's going to run different ways. You know, that's how rotation is. Sometimes the layouts really agree. And then yesterday we saw a lot of layouts that had a ton of work. Ooh, kind of slid that one in a little bit. Pretty perfect here. Oh, a little stretch, though. Anytime your body's across one of those corner pockets out to the middle mm -hmm. of the table, you're going to have some stretch on the 5 by 10 and The problem with the stretch is you lose a little bit of power, right, Mark? Yeah, and also when you're you know awkward, then you tend to get a little hurried in your transition in this 4 and 8th pocket. You know, take a toll. I like the simple play here with the 6 uh, 
very doable. Good decision. Yeah. Mika comes from Finland. He was a Hall of Famer. His, he had a great Hall of Fame speech I was present for. I've been to many. I didn't see his, though. Oh, he's going to hit it light. Okay, nice shot. Really nice touch. And very ideal to tire score it. Oh, that's where the pause can get you. I don't know if you realize that wasn't anything like how he wanted that ball hit. The six hit very mm -hmm. thick to the pocket. So what happens is it just had a little more deflection on the cue ball with that left English. Now Mika, who's resided in New York City for some time. Probably 20 years, huh? 15, 20 years? Every bit of that, I would yeah. think. Still doing it, though. He'll be at the World Nine Ball Championships after this event in Poland. Good out there. Ties our score two games apiece. And uh, some really good pools so Eminem far here. He has in kind the of been on the arena. upswing. He had what a few down years where you didn't see him as much, and he certainly wasn't Aramis, finishing high. And then Mez here in recent years, like he's kind of rededicating right himself the to the sport. Of the arena. They have their Accurac. They have Chalk. And like you said, he had a high really finish cool on the big foot at the International. Out. Might want to yeah. stop in and uh, check that out. 2-2. Two, two. As we head into Rack 5, match the Alvin Ocean, will be breaking. It was before Alvin went That's on to win that event. Good memory. I remember we broadcast it. I just forgot who his opponent was during that. But Alvin had an amazing run. Yeah, it was a late night match, if you recall. Uh, a couple matches had ran over and talked to Mika afterwards. He was a little fatigued, but he said it wasn't uh, that wasn't was it, what it was. Alvin Ocean was kind of not to be denied on the ten foot mm -hmm. that, that week. It seemed like. Yeah, hard not to love Alvin's game. Okay, we're tied at two for Toonski breaking. Miesco. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. All right, Miesco for Toonski. He does not overdo the break, just squares him up. Yeah, nothing down, though. Let me just check out the old break demon speed app here now that I think about it. And let's just see what that break was. It's a pretty cool thing. Around 20? 19-2. 19-2, okay. Yep. Got good movement on the balls. The eight went a little high to the side. The four roller a hair long. And now Mika in a great spot. All of these guys are capable of hitting them much harder, but they're going for accuracy and get the ball action. You can see there's three, six balls from the 10 on the far end of the table, but just nothing found the pocket. The three almost did. You know, he can come between the 5'8 pretty easily. He could pull up the side rail um, and get bet you know between the 4'10 pretty easily. That's probably the shot most guys are going to play mm -hmm. instead of coming across. But you can see pretty big gap between the 5'8 to come across for the two in the opposite hole. So just a little bit of what you like here. This is more of the standard shot. Yeah, fractionally more consistent because you're staying, you know, online to the position the whole way. Where you're coming across, if you bump something, you can easily get awkward, which, you, like you suggested, it's a big gap. However, he was going to have to create that with stroke. It wasn't natural to go, so as long as you're going to have to go with the stroke, you might as well stay on the flat side in case your speed's off. Yeah, and he comes across, right? You could get flat and straight on the rail on the two going away from the four. At that angle, coming up the rail with the cue ball long and straight was, and on the rail was never possible. Right. So a little longer shot maybe on the two, but not a problem for these guys. And the five ball's a little awkward. I think it's got a portion of the pocket by the nine. But then he's got to think of the seven as well, Mark. So there's some things that, that are developing here in rack number five. Yeah, there's some serious work to be done yet. Yeah, and this out of line on the five is where it kind of doesn't help so much. I don't know if he can shoot this in the corner and really get past the side, which is what he would need to get on the seven. Don't want to shoot that seven-nine combo, really. If he goes in the side pocket, he's got to play from below, it looks like, on the six. Oh, he could get past it. 
Nice shot. Very mm -hmm. nice. And he got the angle he needed. Yeah, straight shooting is what Mika's game has always been about. It's not a position play type guy. It's not like a gorse that just gets the right pinpoint right on the button. But uh, shot making, he relies on that and momentum and tempo, rhythm. What Mika, I thought, he's he was one of those guys that just kept a lot of pressure on you at all times just because how great he was offensively. Um talk about Shane a lot with the rollout I thought I think Shane's one of the most difficult guys to to deal with when he rolls out just because he rolls out so difficult in so many manners he doesn't really look to tie balls up he looks to put the pressure on you and yeah. Mika was kind of the same he was one of those guys that would roll out to something offensive that was just stupid tough but you hated to give it back as well mm -hmm. Now, this was calculated in. He knew there was a chance of missing that ball, but he wanted to play the ball speed that might introduce the eight ball as clutter. Now you can jump with your playing cue only. You cannot use your break cue, and you cannot use a jump cue. I'll tell you, if the eight's not in the way, Mark, this is the type of kick shot I really like going to the short rail straight in front of me and back at the seven. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds like a harder hip. Wow, I didn't expect him to miss that, but... Um, there's a lot of things, a lot of avenues, especially with the 8 and 9, the way they were, that mm -hmm. a lot of good things could have happened kicking that direction. But Well, that's an unforced error because uh, a player at this level has to hit that ball at that range. We understand if it's, you know, you're traveling much further. But uh, anyway. And what Mark's saying is, happens. you know, you can sell out all day hitting that ball, and that's that's not a big deal, but really just surrendering ball in hand, not giving yourself a chance at – something fortunate right that's a you can call that an error for sure you get so few innings and you have to make the most of each one so you're not going to score that ball that often but if you do hit it a lot of times 20 percent of the time you get a backdoor safety yeah it's a long-term kind of thing right you know, it may not work out today tomorrow next week but you and the ice man takes the lead it. after rack five have some fortune somewhere at some point Sky Wood, we're in a bank smash now, and I believe a tough one. I think Fedor Gorse just won his second banks match. No surprise there. The performance he put on the Bigfoot table last night suggests he's the man to beat <laughs> again this year. 11 to 1. Dominating performance. We ended up playing what a nine thirty eight, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super on the, strong on the number, I think nine thirty eight. Mickey breaking from dead center, so that tells you usually when they're dead center, that's not when they're going to hit them real light. That's usually when they're going to put more speed on them. For some reason, I don't, I'm not sure why that is. They, well, he didn't open up too much. Him a little more than Fortunsky, maybe, or what seemed like a little more. Now, two dry breaks here, Mark, and the big lefty uh, coming in for a cut shot on the one, I believe. A huge difference here the 10 foot. If you're righty, you're probably not stretching to cut this one, but now, like I said, the left hander, he can attack. Got to find somewhere for the cue ball. That may keep him from attacking, actually. Pretty good speed there. Yeah, recognizing he really couldn't play the one very far, just the cue ball. Yep, just got the break speed in. It was 18 flat. 18. The break demon is a pretty cool thing. Yeah, and deal. I think that works on you know the percussion of it, right? The noise yeah, it does a, a, it has a number of ways that it accumulates the the data. And it's pretty interesting too. They have to mic the table to produce this, and then it uh, feeds the information up here accurately. Unlike you know the, some of the other things, the only thing that can take it away is if you hop the cue ball to the break. Sometimes that can create some problems as far as just giving you instant feedback on it. Oh, okay. And then it even figures out on, the, this is a 10-foot table, and you put where the cue ball is at, so it calculates the distances traveling, and that's what all factors in to make the equation that gives you the speed. 
Yeah, so it's like, uh, it's more of what happens at arrival is how it gets all the data, really not how the cue ball is actually sent towards the rack, correct? So well, it's not like a clock on the cue ball as I, it leaves, right? It's more about... No, it is a clock, no, because it measures the tip impact on the cue ball and then in the arrival at the head ball. And so I don't know if it's the average, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. But anyway, it gives us a uniform number so we can kind of see if they're hitting them hard, soft, whatever it might be. Mika knew he had to turn the cue ball loose a little bit there. And that's why when someone hits downward and hops it down there, sometimes it gives you that high speed. You know, you'll, you say, oh, 39, there's no way. You yeah, know, but yeah. it, it'll catch the bounce right away off the tip. So it gets those two figures and it'll flash up every once in a while. Mm. Then you have to go back and then see what happened at the end of it. It'll give you a speed. Well, there's Mika. Tried to muscle back. And it hasn't been, you know, terrible luck or anything so far but there's been three or four shots already that have kind of gone mika's way in a few mm -hmm. uh, situations right a couple kick shots of course nice hits but didn't have to get the safety now miss on the two and it's left him very difficult though the one thing as a player 20 percent of the time the guy's going to leave you tough yeah yeah Okay, so you can't let this bother you. If you're, if you're looking for roles or something, we know the other guy's going to play good, and there's going to be some fortunes. Oh, nice hit here with really good speed. <laughs> and there, there he made a super nice kick, hit it solid, and then the other one was a very routine kick. He missed yeah. it entirely. That was, that was well played. It was almost like maybe he took the other one just a little bit for granted. Yeah, and this ball got very near the rail, so hard to go off the left side. Not saying you can't do it, but... You know, double kisses there. Mm -hmm. You lose a little control when you have to cut it a little more. So I wouldn't be surprised he cuts the two down the table, but he's going to play off the left. Boy, nice. Nice shot. Yeah, and that's just a 10-foot kind of table shot and probably the correct shot even on a 9-footer, even though he let him see a piece. Mm-hmm. I think he's got the entire ball. It's the kind of shot you want to hit off the right side of the two and run the cue ball. A lot of obstacles and hard to get the two to the back rail. He did very well there at dodging the seven and dodging those obstacles. Really super nice job. shot. Yeah. yeah, super job. And that's where he was really playing the two. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to get between the four or five, of course, but the two was really the premium. Now that cue ball here on the overhead, you can see it kind of got wedged up, and Mika's down on one knee looking, so it, it means part of that two ball is obstructed by the three, if not all of it. Does he have to swerve this? Looks like it. No, maybe not. Yeah, Let's one thing thin. about Mika, though, if you've been around, like right on top of him playing him, oh, he did catch the three. Well, he put right English first off, you know. Mm -hmm. When you're close, you can't put the English that deflects towards the, <laughs> yeah. the, the object ball that's in front of you, right? But right. And that happens easily to all of us sometimes. But if you ever, you know, were around Mika, and of course, I played him a lot. We just drew each other a lot, mm -hmm. um, just how it was. And he was one of the best ever with, the, like, the soft swerve, the level swerve. Mm -hmm. You know, one that as a spectator, you don't see him elevating the cue, but he's actually curving the cue ball. Uh, uh, speed important here so he can reach it. Let's get another look at this. Oh, yeah, he put right English on it, and he was kind of next to the three, so he deflected right in, and maybe just a hair of right. Maybe it was just a uh, overlook on how attached he was to the three ball. Well, I think he was trying to take the four and a five out of it with that side spin, but yeah. then they prevented him from hitting the edge of the two ball. So, Well, what we got to say really is, even a finer shot than we expected from Fortudski or that we uh, commented on getting that snooker behind the three. That's another thing I like about this guy. He uh, keeps it really simple with the cue ball a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, he'll, he'll take on the shot in the corner easily. I think he was a semifinalist uh, at the European Open last year as well. Maybe it was quarterfinals, uh, uh, losing to Jose Delgado, I believe, from Spain. 
he was sweating how straight he got on the five because he wanted to kind of pop it down there, but now he may have to settle for a longer thin cut from mid table. No, he's able to get the cue ball little down. Little he's okay. Yeah. That that thin cut safety that Fortunsky played early on that forced Mika into the foul, that that's something that, you know, it doesn't look like much on the scorecard, but it's going to be the reason that he wins this rack, too. And it was not an easy shot to play because he had to use speed, like you said, make sure he gets the two ball in the end rail and just hope to get the cue ball down there. He was hoping to get behind the three and looked like he came up short, but clearly he got it pinned to the edge. Well, the word that... It, that you mentioned right there speed was what really made the shot difficult you know he had to come from some distance had a real thin cut on the two it's one thing to have a thick cut you know on the on the two from distance that you feel pretty comfortable because you got a few different ways you can hit it but a thin cut on the two and lays down the speed on the object ball and then gets a big reward with the cue ball mm -hmm. Moving forward as you watch this match and, and you'll get various camera views, you'll see Fortunsky's compact, simple swing where that upper arm stays real stationary. So it's a real, there's not much can go wrong with this stroke and it really enhances accuracy under pressure. And then you'll hear people say, oh, you got to collapse your elbow. Okay, well, I'm not opposed to it if you can do it perfectly. But if you can't pour 10 hours a day into it, why would you include extraneous motion that is irrelevant to yeah. producing, you know, because, and some people try to say, oh, well, you, because you uh, follow through longer, or you, you, st you only stay on the cue ball three thousandths of a second maximum. Dr. And Day proved six that. Racks, we are all so tied if it doesn't increase again. that, then okay, you're just adding right, extraneous set. motion that does not improve not anything, right. but offers more opportunity for inconsistency. Well, the thing about the, I don't mind the elbow drop as long as it's just natural. I'm, I talk about Meek all the time. He played his, his, best part of his career for 15 or 20 years and he'd swing the cue and it just after the swing was over because of momentum the elbow would drop it just a little bit but it wasn't something he intended to put in the swing it was just something of a result of, of you know accelerating through the cue ball right um the one that that to me is just kind of i don't know about so still is the intended elbow drop part of the swing mm -hmm. like you're saying mm -hmm. i don't see it helping so, like you say, uh, I'm not sure it's uh, it's worth it. Uh, if you if know. you look at like uh, Mika, okay, now he plays all the time and it's very consistent. And if you look at Fortunsky, you'll see just a wiggle because as this hand comes forward, the energy has to go somewhere, so you'll get a little ripple. Well, that's but momentum, that, yeah. But yeah. at that point, and that's what you're talking about—the natural right. Elbow that's collapse. fine by me. It, yeah. it, but it's very little, and it's produced not the tip is long off the cue ball at that juncture. It's when right. you arrive just before, and you include just a hint of that. Now you got speed control issues, accuracy issues, consistency issues. Well. You know, I think an accelerating stroke is the proper way to swing the cue. I mean, it's an every, that's how they teach every sport to do anything. It doesn't matter what it is. And and uh, what I find or what I kind of see, Mark, is anything you throw in there throws the, uh, slows the acceleration down. So, like, if you grip the cue, for instance, right, mm -hmm. you're slowing it down. If you drop the elbow early, you're slowing it down, you know, and that's the problem that we're talking about. It's not so much after but if if you're an intended elbow dropper and it comes early that's the problem right mark yes absolutely and that, that that's inherent with people that don't get to train multiple multiple hours every single day is that you've got extra motions in there that's hard to maintain well and it's only for a few shots the guys that use it they don't use it every stroke which also to me is a little awkward just trying to throw that in here for a shot or two but now mika very difficult. He can float this two on the side. I don't think there's any future for the position as far as playing. Oh, look at this little ticky he got. Well, <laughs> Opened I think up the that, three. Yeah, I think that was a hard gamble. I didn't see any future as far as getting shape. And, you know, the argument about the tip staying on the ball and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. If you just want to think about it simply... And don't get too involved with the follow-through and the pull swing. Mm -hmm. Just think about it this way. All the follow-through does is make impact much better. And what I mean by that is 
when you follow through, that means you're you're bursting at impact. You know what I'm saying? Like like when you throw a punch, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. start out slow so you can get the burst right at impact. So what the follow through does is it just makes you don't get not give up as much at impact overall. The, obviously, the tip's not staying on the ball all the way through the swing. And that doesn't happen. But no, uh, the, you know. it's just kind of like why we keep the arm moving whenever we throw the ball. We don't think about it. it. Just makes the release that much better. Yeah, we're saying it a couple different ways, and there's other things involved there. But the shaft buckles a little bit. The tip has some elasticity, so they adhere to each other for maybe as much as an inch and a half down the table, and getting through there uniformly. Mm -hmm. And accelerating through impact it doesn't have to be a burst of acceleration, but just so it's consistently. Well, it's you, like a not child a burst, swing, but I'm right? saying when you accelerate, you're creating a burst because you're accumulating speed right. on the way down. It's, it's not peak, so much you add a burst; it's, no, it's, it's, it's like it's what peak it naturally velocity happens. at yeah, impact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then when you hit the resistance of that six ounce cue ball, it actually naturally slows your tip down a bit, but you're not slowing down. So it's never a thing like this. It's never this. Yeah, of course, you, you've yeah. got to come right on through where that right, tip right. stays on the cue ball. Got a little straight here. I think he can punch it over. I don't think it's playing too bad. Well, he, no, he loves a the straight. punch shot now. He's no, one of the best at the punch shot, in my right. opinion. But yeah, it was straight because he would not have come straight back if he didn't have to. Combo lays nice. I tell you, I mean, if he played the ball in the corner, that nothing wrong with that. But the combo really leads where the seven goes towards the corner as well. A little thick. Okay. Good stroke, though. Yeah, darn good shot. And now Fortun here's Fortunsky's got a, you know, he's got a variety of back swings. Just because, like I said, he doesn't really try to control it. He just kind of swings the cue and lets it go where it wants to go according to the shot. I think I cut you off too much. Sorry about that. No, I was gonna say that you want to bear down now after you made that nice shot in the corner and not let up because you have the routine eight and not get positioned on the nine just because you're delighted. About the shot in the corner. A little awkward. It's got a stun just a little bit. Not really a high ball, I don't think. So he had a little more angle than I thought from here because he got that out there pretty effortlessly, and I was thinking it was a little flat. Yeah, he cut it to the upper part of the pocket a little bit. He's, you know, another one of those guys... <clears throat> That really has a lot of effortless power with the cue ball. Also, mm -hmm. his timing is Heading impeccable. Rack, well, he's a big, powerful man. You can see that. Big, thick upper body. And now, four to three. Regains the lead. Been a few, three lead changes so far in this match. And you can see ball's pocket at 34. Three errors made. 919 mm -hmm. on the TPA. So, pretty solid so far. <laughs> yeah, world class for sure. And, you know, there's quite a few Polish players here. Not all of them, of course, but, you know, guys had to make a tough decision about right. the Derby and, and the World Nine Ball. And, you know, I wonder if some of the Polish guys, because they get to go a little bit more like somewhat home for the tournament, mm -hmm. if it made them feel a little easier about traveling uh, to the Derby prior to such a big event. Of course, the Derby being a real big event as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, I would imagine that's why some of the Chinese players probably had to make a decision as to come here or go to Poland and yeah. that's the World Championship, and so they selected that, even though it it hurts us a little bit to not be able to see some of the premier talent, but certainly understandable. Well, twice as far for them guys as well, the, the Chinese. I mean, that's coming to here and then back to Poland, you know, I mean, that's right. quite a bit. This may have leaked just a little. We'll see type of shot you don't mind curving your ball at though with a little congestion there you got a chance to maybe get the cue ball behind the 410 if you cut the one just a little bit he's looking at the long row kick here boy that leads to a scratch so easily I'm yeah, surprised. The ball maybe yeah. Yeah, I, I guess thought, that's the easiest way to hit it so. I didn't think it was much of a swerve though oh well that camera view so says it really was pretty big swerve well, well, he he hit it. It. there's that uh, scratch you were talking well, about well, maybe not the, the one side. you were thinking yeah. of but yeah, that's a darn shame, though, because it's unusual to scratch that far away from the object ball if you hit it. Yeah, and look how little the one moved. Like yeah. Four inches, maybe, oh, yeah. with that much speed, yeah. so that tells you how thin he caught the one. About half of one of my gray hairs yeah, would right. be the thickness of that one, because it only moved just a smidgen. Here's a good look at it, second yeah. look. 
Looks like it moved about 10 inches over, maybe, something like that. And sur surveying a lot here. And he wants to be able to s reach it. That's the thing. He doesn't want to fall below the two and worry about the five. Mm hmm. So he's going to come here where he can maybe follow two rails out around the five mark. Yeah, you know, it, it, Mika's game is interesting because he has a power draw and he plays to a draw shot more than I see other top pros. Most pros use their angles. Mika likes to control the cue ball with his draw and does so quite well. And that was only in the event that he fell too straight there. He would have been completely comfortable drawing it six feet for position. Didn't have to do that. Going to use a little natural angle here on the five to come a couple, two, three rails. It's pretty perfect here. He can draw off of it. He can kind of stun, roll. He can do a lot of things here on the five. Probably draws this just in about a diamond past the side pocket where his bridge hand is at now. He came a little longer than I thought he would now. He's got to look at a little bit of straight end now. Yeah, he wouldn't have mind having a little bigger angle than this. Now he may be forced to go rail first to get the cue ball off that end rail. And you don't really like to pound these corner pockets because they're four and an eighth. It's so easy to try to create a little extra angle. He's drawing out of there. Oh, nice job. Right, he's going to get maybe on the 50, maybe perfect for the short side. He'll certainly take that. You know, Mika one time was talking about his uh, beginnings playing Russian pyramids with, with big heavy balls on bigger table and super snug pockets. And he felt that that really developed his draw stroke. Those big heavy balls, are, I don't know, they're maybe even heavier than billiard balls. I think they are. I played it a bit myself. The thing that I, that for me, is the games aren't that hard. I mean, they're, it's a hard game, don't get me wrong, but it's not that hard to get, get a feel for things. Mm -hmm. The thing that really I have nice trouble with is the cue sticks. You know, you want to use one of the pyramid cues. You know, so four, that, to me, match. takes a lot more getting used to mm -hmm. than the actual balls and understanding what to do with the stroke and so, so on to make balls. But yeah. to me, the cues are, are a little different. It, uh, when, when you play snooker, rather than play with my pool cue, yeah, there's a nice look at the rack track. When, when you use your pool cue, I'm more comfortable timing-wise and tempo-wise, even though it's not proper for snooker, for high-performance snooker, but I realize I'm not going to play high-performance snooker. <laughs> yeah, <know>? right. so, <laughs> I'd better, I better go with what I can maybe hit a couple balls in with. Now, if I was going to play exclusively, I would switch to a 54-inch snooker cue. Yeah, with the ash wood and all that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's ash, I believe, right? Yep. Okay. All right, Fortunsky to break. This match moving right along. Our first match of the day, three more to follow here on day two of the 2023 Derby. Oh, that's perfect timing there. I don't know if he'll make one, but I know Eight he ball. hit him exactly how he wanted. Beautiful layout yeah. here. Okay. Look at the four, five, six. The six is maybe the only impediment here if he gets funny on the angle. If he gets on the angle good, no problem. Yeah, the five's so close, you'd have to figure he's mm -hmm. going to be okay there. I mean, could shoot the two and draw and open up the six with the four laying there as well. So I think here, just try and get, you know, somewhat as close to the two as you can without, you know, taking too much of a risk. He may cheat the pocket drawing it. He may cheat the pocket following it. We'll see. Uh-oh. This is what I was talking about earlier with the warm-ups. I saw him overhit the ball with the speed here on, on the 10-foot a few times. Now, yeah. there, I don't think he cheated the pocket how he wanted to either. Yeah. But, you know, because if he cuts that a little more, the speed's probably really correct because he doesn't hit the one so full and gets such a response on the draw right. stroke, right? So right. he's got to cut this in, I think. Yeah, it's, it's certainly still manageable from here, but it's things are way, way tougher, three times harder than he was hoping, hoping for. I'm surprised he's hitting down. I would have probably hit a high ball there, but nevertheless... 
Okay. He's gotten him on a double kiss as well. He's going to have to probably kick this ball mark to the bottom rail. I don't really, unless he goes for the bank cross corner. I don't know if he can beat the kiss. I think he may have to kick, kick at this. Just try to lodge the cue ball up on the four. Light kick. No, he was no, going beauty. distance. Okay. Beauty. He actually used the dry table to make the cue ball go a little bit backwards off of that mm -hmm. cut. Something you wouldn't see on a, on a broke-in table at your pool room. Right, and that's where you go into the rail with follow. Mm -hmm. Then when it comes off the rail, it has backspin. Or the spin continues the same direction when he hits an object ball full. It has that draw effect. I don't know if we could get a replay of that shot, but you could certainly see it back up. Just a hint. Wow, I'm surprised he went for that. I mean, that was a pretty easy safety to lay the two on the side rail and use the 7-9 as big blockers. That may be a little of that frustration I talked about earlier that Fortunski kind of dealt with early in his career after making a mistake on what looked like a pretty easy break and mm -hmm. run, you know, after a perfect break shot. So, I mean, the 7-9 there from, what was that, seven feet away on the two ball there that he tried to cut in? I mean, it's laying pretty perfect to put the two on the side rail, like I said, and the cue ball yeah, behind right. the 7-9. <clears throat> Might have been a little bit of the... Uh... I'd like to get a quick hit and make a nice long ball like this and get back in line and yeah. cash this game in. Nobody will know that I had a lapse on my position play. But. Can he slow draw this out without using the rails? Oh, okay. So speed crucial here and really nice. He's going to have to take a bit of a cut shot on the seven, though. Can't, get, can't really get across, I don't think. And you kind of you can just go ahead and develop the ten. Just go into the back of the ten, kick it out, leave the cue ball where the ten's at now, and just play from there. And then the ten getting positioned on the ten is far easier if you can remove it from this side cushion. Yeah, I like well, he this. didn't want to fool with I it. I wouldn't have messed with the ten either. Okay, but uh, I mean, at least concentrate and get the sex ball down. But, but yeah. that's sometimes where, like, if you notice, Mika, of course, doesn't take a lot of pre-strokes and stuff. But it, it was a little different than most of the shots. Just a little quicker on the trigger. Fortunski's got to be very happy to get <laughs> yeah. back to the table. And this is going to be overhit just a uh, yep. little bit as well. Oh. <laughs> now he's got to pop down on it. He's got a hint of an angle. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a huge impediment. No, he can go forward. but If that had gotten straight, though. Exactly. That's why the players want to stay away from the rail with the cue ball. Kind of real simple. Just back across. And use the second cushion if he desires. I probably do. So there hadn't been a two-game lead yet in this match, I don't believe, anyways. Well, we got a battle back and forth, five to four now. Fortinsky has a one-game lead here inside the Yeah, we got a great day arena. of action coming to you. <laughs> well, the second round of the Banks was this morning, so a lot of guys had matches and ladies. 817 for <laughs> Eminent, 872 for Fortunski with a little lead at 5 4. There's our National Beard Academy rack track. You can see. Not. Uh, yeah, you'd like to look at the four ball here, but he probably banks the one away. There's so much congestion in the middle of the table. If you can find what you feel is a pretty secure spot, you'd like to squeeze him behind the four, but that gets away from you a little bit. You know, the one banking it away has got a lot more cover, Mark. Kind of drawing the ball over a little bit. He's playing by. Uh, this is the shot I like. Look at point. Yeah, okay. somehow bank it away, right? I mean, that just too many balls in the middle of the table, not for you to, you know, have some security there. I tell you, if he cuts it just a little thinner, he gets the cue ball a little higher up behind the five. I think he's giving Mika just a slight edge on the one, but maybe. Still can't really shoot it. Right. Sometimes you have to kick, even if you can see that slight edge, just for control purposes, it gives you a greater chance to get separation there. This might be a soft kick, too, rather than a hard one. Absolutely. All that congestion. Double kiss. Back door. Semi-safe.
even though the bank's available, it's not justified or worth it. Just put the one ball in the center of the end rail here and bring the cue ball back underneath the 10. Oh, he's using the three. Great shot. And better. Yeah, and I think... Tangibly what, better. Yeah, what he liked about that is just the agreeance with the one ball. And look at the 7-8 too, right? I mean, if he doesn't get behind the three, he's got the 7-8 as well, so... The Andy uh, hit. Andy hit. Oh, wow. yeah. Misfortune. All right, we'll see if Fortunski plays for the side on the two ball. I don't know if I play for the side or not. I guess it's pretty easy to come two rails and get for that side pocket. That's what he's looking at now. The lefty's going to reach over the long rail here and kind of pull the ball. Could roll it. Doesn't want it to get away from him, though, so we'll probably use the second rail. Maybe not. Yeah, he does. Super nice. Perfect position just to stop your ball. It's amazing that the player how the players are these days, Mark, or just how the game is. I consider really the most dynamic sport in the world, probably, pool. And it's amazing how the players just seem to play it better and better. Yeah, I consider it the, the ultimate challenge in sport because uh, it's mental, physical. Uh, then you, you got the psychological part, you got the decision making. And then it's also intricate. It's predicated on what Sailor used to yell at me about, Marco, you got to hit the microdot. And this is before computers. I, I didn't know how big a microdot was, but I, the way he was so gruff, I'm pretty sure it was really small. And I would just shoot around the middle, yeah. not even close. <laughs> well, you know, most sports, like talk about a lot, have one round object. I mean, the... the plays for a big variable right i mean that's what round objects do you just don't know what they're going to do all the time and yeah we play with many round objects right at once and uh just a funny thing i don't think it's really it's just never something you're going to master as, as much as we think uh you know fetter gorse is kind of making it look that way <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's the only one well there's a few others that at times make it look a lot that way for sure, but it's just a difficult sport. Okay, speed control so crucial here. And again, I'm I'm really surprised he picked that path, Mark, even though he got right to the edge and he still has a shot. I mean, he got right to the edge of being able to make this ball. Boy, it's close. I mean, and then you hate to introduce side spin and kind of curve it around that eight because it's so close to the seven. You don't have much room. No, nah, I think it'd be more about if he needed it to make the seven grab a little bit, maybe not so much swerve around the eight. Okay, so he was it was bigger than I could see because he made that pretty comfortably. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, it was a quarter inch away from being snookered. And it's amazing to travel the cue ball some, you know, five, six, seven feet around the table and get right to that point. Mm-hmm. And you'll see, though, I mean, like I said, what I like about him, very natural with the backswing. It just doesn't try to control <laughs> it. It's not quick either. <laughs> this does not play easily for a left-handed player. Yeah, and again, maybe he just didn't put that thought in there. It could have stunned forward a little bit. Mm-hmm. This is an awkward stretch even with the uh, extension. Mm-hmm. Because you're stretching across your body. It's not so much straight out in front of you. That's not bad, actually. It's not great. No, it's not <laughs> great. I would probably take the extension off shooting righty myself. I would of course, use he, the bridge. If he won't use any side spin, though. So. Oh, good job. 6-4 is our score. And the first two-game lead of the match. I want to recognize a couple of After our great fans racks, back six in to St. Four. Louis. Uh, Yeshko Fortinsky with the lead. Pool League Director Paul Hoffer. 
out in Columbia, Missouri. Mark Lewis is tuned in, watching and learning, he says. These are great fans. Justin Hodge, St. James, Missouri. Glad to have you aboard. He was a class honor man of one of my play great pool clinics. Gary Vosca, up in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. You ever heard of Rhinelander? No, I haven't, but I met a couple people yesterday, really nice people uh, from Columbia, Missouri, actually. Oh, yeah. Tim we, and uh, what was his oh, wife's I was thinking name? Of Bill Johnson. Uh, Her last name is Ralph, actually. Okay. Hey, we got some of the best fans. Rhett Butler, back in Illinois, tuned in. Down in China Spring, Texas, we got Kathy Jo Sawyer. She's right. always one of our great supporters and fans of pool. I've known Kathy since I was about 19, actually. So she I lived was, in Waco area for yep, a short stint. That's where what she, she said, lives. right around Waco. Yeah. All right, Fortunsky All right. breaking with a two-game lead. Yeah, first time to make a little mark in this match for one of the players to, to kind of pull away somewhat. Boy, solid break there. Yeah. Did he get a shot? No, he, he did get a shot, and he got a great one, as a matter of fact. He's got to kind of float it maybe and then the, with a little spin. The two ball finally dropped. Yeah, I think this. he's trying to go two rails inside the three, back above the three. It looks very difficult. I'm sitting right down the line. I think you're threatening mm -hmm. catching a little piece of the three coming Coming out off the first rail. I think he's got to float this, take a little longer shot on the three. A lot of outside spin. A little bit of a drag on the cue ball. Good job. Yeah. A lot of times when you miss that ball right there, you'll miss it heavy for the same reason that Jeremy alluded to earlier because you're trying to hold the cue ball and or get more angle on the cue ball, and so you tend to just instinctively hit it heavy, but then the pocket's not there, you know, and then you feel yeah. dumb hanging it. And the thing is with the, you know, prime conditions, the clean, clean object balls like that and everything, they don't grab that side spin near as much to where right. it wants to throw in easily, right? Your pool room table, you can really rely on the English working very well to where the slick table, sometimes you have to catch it a little thinner. Running out is no longer an option. Uh, well, you I think got way it's, out of line. Yeah, it's way too difficult now. Now watch this. You can certainly learn something from this where a lot of people just instantly bury the cue ball. See the eight doesn't not have space to get by the eight with the cue ball. So very smart shot there from mm -hmm. Fortunsky, especially mm -hmm. no no jump cues, right? He didn't try to force something uh, offensively that wasn't there. So he played a bad position. Don't compound it with a bad offensive shot. You know, I mean, so yeah. Take but a lot medicine. of people would initially try to bury the cue ball behind the seven, and he recognized that this was super easy and very effective. Really, no pressure on this safety at all from from Fortunsky. Soft speed. Uh, that ball got way up higher than he ever expected. And what I found, and you know, we all know what happened with the factory with with Simonis, right? The difficulties mm -hmm. they had there for a little while with the. And uh, what I found playing a little bit here, and, and, and going to look at the tables, and I think it was Ivan that I was talking to that, that those machines settle in a little bit. And it takes a little while to get it back exactly how it was, you know, with their original factory, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems like the cloth has a little less nap, just a hair less, na less nap on it. He's a lefty, so he can draw back between the 5'8 if he wants. Oh, he went between the 5'7. Now, this is going to be an awkward stretch from the corner. <laughs> yep. He grabbed his bridge right away, recognizing. Yeah, it's a huge stretch. Even with the extension. He's got to get it moving as well. Shot clock's burning. Yeah, 12 seconds and counting. Yeah. I guess he has his extension. He does. I'm okay. as I, well, let's see. No, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> Mika has his extension. I can't see what his this circumstance is. Oh, he does. Yeah, he does, in fact, have his extension. And it's automatically put in there if the guys do run to 30 seconds. And if you're down on the ball before 30 seconds, they do not uh, tax you. 
This shot clock is really not to call fouls. It's just to keep the match moving. I'll tell you what. He got down with that extension and just uh, made that look pretty easy there on the four ball. Right. A lot yeah. more work getting to the extension than it was using it, it seemed like. And you, well. I got a little stun angle here. It's the type of shot you could drive into that right point a little bit. You stay clean, usually no problem. Easy to overhit it a touch. Oh, really nice release of the cue stick there. Yeah, that thing thumped home, hitting the heart of the pocket. You could hear it from up here. That three game lead. And Porchinski opens up a three game lead now. Yeah, we Could thought it was going to be a break and run. Mika possibility. Will be but then when he fell short in the position, he played a killer safety. Mika was unable to hit it, and then he cashed it in. So he's really won a couple games off of his defensive skills here. That long, thin safe on the two earlier on, the, the speed control was right, the hook. Mika on the three and caused him to foul. And then this one, two rail kick to hit the two ball that caused him to foul. Yeah, and things just haven't gone well for Mika since that six ball he missed. He had a foul on the on the cue ball when he was next to the three. Um, not an easy kick there, but one you expect him to hit. And, of course, for Tunsky, it seems like he's really tuned the break in, probably breaking as well as anyone we've seen so far as far as results, and now the scratch on the break. So time for the timeout when Mika gets a chance, in my opinion. He needs to take a break, get away from the table. Mm hmm Yep, when it goes dunking straight into the side pocket, we know you miss hit it, and we yep. know you lost your focus on that particular shot, and then now it's like it's compounding. Now we're getting to the death spiral point where it's hard to recover, and that's why it'd be a great time to take your timeout, collect yourself. Here we get a second chance to look at this break yeah and he's breaking from the left breaking and scratching from the left something that doesn't happen that often just because you're always trying to get towards the center of the table with the right. cue ball right so that's actually a little bit of a hit on the other side of the one and big draw stroke here and one of the main reasons to play the cue ball from off center on the break is to try to take one of those two side pockets out, out of play right, yeah. and he went into the one that he was trying to take out of play but now it's very easy to miss hit it so I'm not alluding to the fact that that was a grotesque error. I'm just saying, but you do try to at least take one of them out. Well, it's kind of like, you know, when things, at least what I've found years ago is when things, you know, go away from you, a mistake, maybe maybe not some fortune or, or, or having some misfortune, mm -hmm. not necessarily take your time out, but just get a breath of fresh air, you know, like take a couple good mm -hmm. breaths, you know, regroup, whatever you have to do before you break those balls right there. And Oh, just a little light for the lefty again, a big stretch. And you can see he's kind of right. a little bit laughing at himself yeah. a little bit. Yeah. He's looking into the bullpen, getting the right-hander out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, a lot of people, you know, at the table, Fortunski is pretty stone cold, uh, but really a fun guy who actually is improving a lot with his English now. But, oh, wow, what a nervy Man. shot. What a nervy Good shot. Speed. Yeah, with Ooh. the right hand. Beauty going to have to play either a 6-10, maybe a 6 in the side. I don't think the 6-10 is really the play. Yeah, I think he's going to come around three rails. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, well, or go back into the side pocket. Yeah, the 7's pretty cuttable. That's why I like the 6 in the side, keeping okay. it simple. You know, if the 7's really more pinned somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not the place to go two rails. You just want to go to the end rail and bounce up. Yeah, oh, he was able to not even go to the rail, so. Yeah. Good speed control, too. He picked up a nice angle that allows him to travel easily towards the seven. That makes this shot play so much easier. Well, those types of shots where you're not using a rail or like a one rail kind of shot, we talked about it yesterday. Those are the reps, I think. You know, there's certain types of yeah. drills you can set up to where you're yeah. really only ha having to float without using the rail, which is one of the most uncomfortable ways to play, especially for the top players. Well, you make a good point, and I, I thought about that yesterday, too, what you were saying, because those are those little uh, practiced, uh, comfortable, if you don't play them and they come up in a game, now you're not as good 
with them because you've never worked them, and they're not glamorous or fun to work at. It's just that it wins, you know. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, and then, you know, it's something you're not gonna come up with all the time because it's kind of still right. even as much as they practice it, it's not the way they want to shoot the shot. So, but it is gonna yeah. come up. It's it's instinctive for us as human beings to be basically lazy <laughs> no i'm just saying you know right. so, so we don't practice those things because they're a little eh, it's a lot of work and but you can tell in big moments um you know there's a lot of euros where like these little one rail you got to use your speed control there's not really any kind of reference like that mm -hmm. second rails there mm -hmm. and you can tell that those drills they put in under pressure yeah uh, when it comes up under pressure it really shows all right nice out there eight four is our score Great play over 900 for Kurczynski, and he's got a four-game lead. Yeah, going along with what you're saying, too, is that it's, you can't just do the drills. I, I think drills always denotes drudgery and tedium. Mm -hmm. You have to be inspired to do them, and then it, it, you can't go through. Like You can't play casually in your pajamas and then look at your cell phone and not pay attention. It's got to be like pressure at home practicing that no-rail shot. Yeah, well, to, to and also, yeah, like we talked about yesterday with drills, I see a lot of people not going through their process and stuff. You know what I mean? The thing is, you don't realize mm -hmm. when you're doing those drills, when you go through your process, not only you learn to trust your process, but you're building it and making it better at all times while you're doing another um, task, which is the drill itself. Mm -hmm. So why not get the mm -hmm. most? If you're going to have to do the drill or, or right. you feel like it's the right thing to do, why not get the most out of it by making it real quality? all the way around why is it now that uh, i'm on the other side of my playing career i understand better how to train <laughs> i know <laughs> right know? gosh i wish i could go back i would have been so much smarter about it well you know i th i think for a little while when you play the sport you don't realize how much of a sport it is uh, i you know i think at first it becomes mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know how to explain that exactly well i think you know i do agree you don't yeah. realize what you're dealing with you yeah, don't exactly. realize it's yeah. actually closer to nuclear physics than it is you know just hit some balls in the pocket right, right. to play high performance pool i'm not talking about just play pool because there's a game of pool where you play on bar table argue about your handicap blah blah but this is the sport of pool what these guys are doing and it's an athletic thing it's a it's a lifestyle it's an investment it's it's all the time it's not like they just practice up to become good was he considering going three rails with this around the nine? He looked at a, a mark over there on the opposite long rail. You would figure he, you're definitely zigzagging this cue ball with low outside, maybe even just straight low. Table plays nice for this shot. Two cushions back to the center of the table here. Yeah, he had it perfect. Perfect speed. Best speed of the day for Fortunsky. Yeah, but, you know, mm -hmm. whenever I was a kid, of course, baseball was the number one. I played them all, but... You know, we worked hard on all the little things there. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you recognize what you did in those sports and, and knew coming into this sport, you may treat it differently a little, you know, earlier in your career I and think, myself as well. I think for me particularly, I didn't respect it. I thought, well, this can't be hard. I play baseball, basketball, football. Yeah. And I look at this little nine-foot table, and I'm like, well, I'll master this in three weeks. You know, I mean, it just can't be that hard. And then <laughs> the dumbest possible thought ever, and here we are. 50 years later, I still don't know how hard it is. Yeah, it's funny. When I started playing pool, I didn't really uh, didn't really realize you could play uh, really good pool, first mm -hmm. off. I certainly didn't mm -hmm. think you could play for a living. I knew you could gamble at it. That was probably the intriguing thing. He's <laughs> yeah. coming past the side here. So touchy shot. Mm. He wanted to get the premium out of the cue ball here and not have to deal with a longer five ball. And simple is just kind of like the theme for Fortunsky. I mean, just, you know, not over the top in any kind of manner. Um, when, when you hang out with him, you know, he's just a real solid guy. Yeah. S simple stroke, keeps it simple with his decisions. And there's a lot of you got to give a lot of respect. You know, it's one thing to build your physical, right? I mean, that's what we're always doing. Mm -hmm. And all of us have to deal with a little mental anguish in this game. But if, you have, if you're one of those players that has a little you know, more of a 
short fuse, I guess you might say. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a that's a difficult one in our sport, and you got to respect somebody really building and, and working through that, right? Yeah. Trying to become much better in that regard. Yeah. yeah. Because there's a lot of players that never did it. They just went ahead and were hotheads if they lost and, and uh, gracious winners. <laughs> Not even always that. Right. Well, that was a uh, crucial break and run out there. That, that was big. That really break and run sets the tone Mieszko, of this match. And he's got a nine four. five point game. Yeah, and it's been ever since that six ball that he overcut and with both players playing tremendous pool. And I think that was, was that at 4-4 four, four or 5-4? Four, I believe it was one, one of those two score lines. You know, always when I was the captain of the Moscone Cup, they kind of wanted you to get, you know, during the match, go down and bother the player. Like, you know, what am I going to tell Shane Van Boning? You know I mean? <laughs> no, seriously. What, 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 but, you know, and then it was almost like, well, you don't care enough. You don't show. I trust them. They can play a race to five. They don't need any coach. In, in the practice room, maybe it's something. That's the time to talk about it. But, you know, it's like they, the TV people want that image of like i'm gonna go down there and say hey quit missing balls <laughs> okay it, 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 it only is uh, gonna upset your players it's, it's never gonna settle them in and that's well, what yeah, i'm trying to I say mean, you distract them from the task at hand it's super hard i recognize it but the tv people don't recognize it so they think you're not showing enough emotion or enough like that has a bearing when actually you need to calm yourself not <laughs> if you were a boxer, I could go out and slap you in yeah. the face and say, "Go kill this man." You know? Well, that's the thing. You know, you can't you can't go out there, you know, like we're players with helmets on in football and get all <laughs> hyped up and you know high fiving real no. real hard and right. whatnot. And, but I think there is some value if you're not going to get too technical. You know, occasionally you'll talk about the break, but I think there is some value for some players as far as like you know keeping them in a lighter mood. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like, whatever it is, you have to treat them all a little uniquely, right? right? But I think there is some value in, in some of that. But not all the time. And no, it's, no, it's no. It's distracting, no. is yeah. my point. And I'll tell you, Shane Van Boning does not want you to say one damn word to him yeah. during the match. He can, he's he got it. You know, I mean, don't, don't, whatever you're going to tell him, he already knows and has already thought about many, many times before you thought it up yourself. So I like that kick. I was surprised he hit it that hard. But he's going to like the four ball covering up the pocket here. And maybe the eight getting the snooker. Of course, that two rail kick, what happens is you always put a little more on it. Because if you happen to catch it a certain way, the one might catch the nine. You might not get a rail. Exactly. You know, so. Exactly. You tend to overhit that for that reason. Because you got a long travel. And you're not positive exactly how thick you're going to land on it. Absolutely. And this is a tough spot, though, for Mika. I don't know how much of the one he has. He, he only not has a piece of it at the yeah. most. He and may I, have to swerve it slow to get much and and that leads to nothing that leads to a sellout and it's not far from a double kiss if he tries to like cut the one in between the four and six and, and play it back up table i think he beats the kiss ah that's what i was talking oh, about boy. mark yeah that looked like he was just cut off all yeah, the way around yeah and he just couldn't hit it thick enough to beat the kiss he had well, to back yeah. cut it and then the eight had him really cut off from really playing left side spin which would have avoided the kiss right side spin actually still goes into the kiss it looked like so psychologically you're losing nine to four and you're shooting a shot that you can lose with but there's no win you can never get the guy locked up or anything and you, yeah you know that this boy it makes it tough yeah, I was wondering if he was what he was going to get off this one ball. Maybe a kiss there. All right, he can edge this, go behind the ten. He can hit it thicker with spin, trying to gain three rails behind the seven nine. I keep it more simple. I like this path myself, especially with the bridge, no side spin really. We might have to see Mika go at this long rail bank here. A little frustration, I feel mm -hmm. like, and there's a reward mark. There's a reward. He generally doesn't hesitate on playing offense. So he's, but oh, he is going to play defense. Okay. Uh, this is going to end up giving up a gap, a shot on the one, and maybe a pocket by the four. And that's that shot you and I talked about a couple times yesterday that you really have to work on, that clip in the ball that's on the back rail and running safeties. That shot comes up so much. If you're going to play with the big boys, you're going to have to have that shot pretty cold. Mm -hmm. I agree. Now, he can bank this and go forward up behind the four. Pretty easy shot. I think he can cut it. 
actually in the lower right. Play the offense. It looks like it's where he's heading. Smoothed it. Look out, scratch. Didn't yeah. scratch, didn't make the one. Yeah, the thing is, though, it was very hard to hang that ball at that angle and mm -hmm. that speed, right? Mm -hmm. So he kind of played a little bit of a two-way, kind of rolling it with the cue ball going towards the four. As a point, it's never wrong to play the two-way, but once you decide that, you have to commit to making the ball because if you go there with ambiguity, you're like, well, I'll still get safe, you almost, you know, you, you increase your miss rate double. Absolutely, yeah. Beautiful shot there from Mika Eminem with the cross side, center of the center of the side pocket. Oh, we know Mika's looking to shoot. <laughs> we know that. Yeah, he was definitely um, a, a Jason Shaw filler type that you know took a number of years uh, to really get his game tactically where he wanted it, but still won events just because of his offensive prowess. Oh, right? Yeah. I mean, it was incredible. I was there when he won his first. Well, it's only World Nine Ball, right? But he broke and ran so many racks. Mm -hmm. And and he'd break, and the one would end up on the end rail, like what we were talking about, where you thin it and run safe, you know? He didn't even think about playing safe. Watch out, eight ball. Watch out, eight ball. Okay, he's all right. He'd just slow rail, long rail, bank the one in, and, you know, it was mm -hmm. winter break. And he just planned on making it and then putting a lot of racks together, and that's exactly what he did. Back-to-back -back U.S. Opens that way, too. Yeah, I watched those as well, and... I think the closest match, if I recall, he had in that World Nine Ball was the final against Ralph Souquet, was it, I believe? At like 15, 11 or 10, somewhere around there. But I watched a lot of his matches just because I knew Mika, of course, but it, he still was a little new to the scene, three, four years around, you know. So Good to see him getting back on the board here with a nice bank on the one and what looks like a, a really nice run out. Hmm. <laughs> Mika, definitely. One stroke. And a nice out there for Mika. Ball in there, just let you know I'm still five. here. 9 5 is our score. Heading into rack 15. Yeshko will have the break. Yeah, Fortunsky uh, didn't miss hit, hit many balls, but you don't expect him to miss hit the break either. So this this lead he's put together is going to be hard to overcome. Especially it seems like he's broke the balls better and better as the match has gone on. I believe the most they've ever had as far as player attendance here at the Derby, right? Roughly 500 players in each event. Besides the Bigfoot, where we carried 16 in this. Random ball placement here in the 10 ball division. Yeah, and it's single elimination, so. Oh, he took a little more off there. That's surprising. The three ball, though, looks good. The one's over the corner again. And he has a shot. Man, it's a little funny. And now the four's gotten funny, so. Does the two pass the six? That's huge as far as getting on the four ball some kind of way. Ooh, I don't think the two passes the six very easily. Yeah. And this is funny. You can come one row at the five to play the two in the same pocket as the one. But really getting kind of flat that way and top inside. I don't know if it grabs enough to really come, what, two rails between the two six? Mm hmm. It looks a little heavy to me to, to grab enough. He might end up getting over top of the six. Inside. Yeah, he hit the six like that. That's what I was thinking that now he's gained it perfectly, though. I have to play it across side here, Mark. On the two, to get the two to the cross side on the four, right? I mean, the five's right there. Oh, you mean play the bank on the four? Yeah. I don't know. That's a, that's a diamond over a diamond down table. It's not a cinch. Yeah, but if you get nice on it, shape is like just automatic. He's, He's going to try and bump it open. He's trying to attack. Stretch. Didn't quite stretch. Pretty good effort. Yeah. Either way, it was tough. You know, you can't fault him. He, he made a great pass at that shot. 
and this is where you can keep the safeties a little more simple, or at least let's say you have more options when there's no jump cues. You know, you could bank the four across yeah. and use the 710 pretty easily here. Not a shot you're going to shoot that often. Yeah, it's hard to get cover here. There's, That's why I say I keep it simple. Just, just like I said, if you bring the cue ball, just roll this ball and go a little past the middle diamond with the cue ball and bank the four across with no jump cues. That's the simple safety that comes up and not best. that often. But right. You yeah. don't want to go all the way. Yeah, but you see how they're kind of toggled, the 710? Yep. He went too far with the uh, cue ball, basically. So, In an effort to make sure that he got the four ball away. But, uh, yeah, now that it looks like there's a gap. Well, the other one that you can play, right, is he could have chipped the four, knowing the four wouldn't pass the five if he brings it up a little, and just go the in rail. Let the guy see the four ball. Oh, I see. You know yeah, what I mean? That, and what's he going to do? I mean, no, that's a good one. Yeah, because this is what you didn't want to have happen. Is that, you know, Mika get back on his horse here. That's right. This is what Mika's looking to do is run some balls. He's willing to take some risk. It's kind of like a, a wounded water buffalo at this point. He's looking to shoot or <laughs> take somebody down. Yeah, he's not giving up at all, of course. Okay, he's got to work the rock a little more than maybe he wanted, but very natural. Two cushions center of the table will work. Able to go through the center of the table. Now he's got even the easier shot to work with. We're not going to call any of these shots easy. We're going to call them less difficult. They're all missable. Yeah, and... Uh Big mistake, and, well, you know, he had to try and create that position on the four and letting that safety get away. Of course, Mika making a nice shot and now another nice out to keep himself in the match, but he does break the balls in the next game, so creeping ever so closer to trying to tie the score. This is the type of shot, again, you can't take your eye off of, huh, Mark? Mm -mm, no, I've missed millions of these and seen them missed. Yeah, for the eternity know, of my career. The thing is, the 5 by 10 is one thing also, but 4 and an eighth here with the pocket size. and Oh, he's kind of jacking up. He doesn't want to roll it. That's surprising. That's Mika's game. Yeah. That's two in a row He, he likes to be a shot man. maker. And a lot of guys have under business card. Professional pool player. Nice. Mika says shot maker. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what he's all about. Oh, good to hear from uh, Joseph Ronak, South Illinois, APA League operator. Says we're sounding good here in the booth. He's yeah. a good dude. Nice guy, yeah. Yeah. Plays great. 100-ball runner. Well, always glad to have them tuned in. Yeah, we lost the straight pool event here at the Derby about four years ago, three years ago, I guess they quit it, maybe. It was a pretty big event here. Yeah. It ran oh, for yeah. many, many years. Some serious high runs. The best ever was the year they had on the 10-foot table. Uh, Stuart Pittman, <laughs> snooker champion, Pittman, Pittman. He ran 100 balls, <laughs> 5 by 10 and was never in line one single shot <laughs> <laughs> the most awkward break shot you've ever seen the flattest thing he would just power up just and and he kind of has this attitude is, how would you americans ever miss on these great big pockets because he plays six by twelve yeah it was it was fun to watch it was all right touchy shot here going into the three it looks like ah uh, he overcut it and it's amazing when you you have that little look at where you're going and you just don't know exactly what's going to happen, uh, you can easily take your eye off the object ball. I'll tell you what I was so impressed with. and uh, Back in the day, they had the one pocket ghost uh, event mm -hmm. to wear and, and some of the feats that some of the guys, Mika Eminem being one of them, I think he ran 60 to take second or 61, where Gabe Owen ran 62 that year, which was just incredible, I thought. 
out of five racks or how yeah, many? Did five the, racks. Yeah, five racks. I mean, that's just a that's a big number to one pocket. Well, yeah. Oh, he was trying to really hit it good coming up on the three with the cue ball. Uh, I don't know about that decision there. Because a lot of times, you you know, you hit firm, you get separation, and you're trying to take advantage of this big table a little bit. <laughs> it's different uh, when you're within a diamond of the side rail. But it's, when you're almost two diamonds away to hit that ball, now the land yeah, on exactly. the proper side, you know. Exactly. It's, that's quite a bit less doable. What you don't want to do is let Mika start shooting freely. Well, the thing is, he... Uh, you have to make him earn his openings. You can't be letting him back at the table with these open layouts. Yeah, right. And also, when Mika missed that six, you know, it wasn't anything like obvious, obvious, but just little things started to turn against him a little bit. Yeah. You know, a few kick shots didn't work out. Right. Uh, Fortunski actually got a little out of line, got away with a shot, uh, scratch on the break, right? So this mm -hmm. can change the other way for Mika. You know, with a little opening and a little opportunity, and, and he can certainly take advantage. He's very capable. It It's hard to deny, deny anybody that's at this quality of play, but you definitely don't want to embolden them at all. You, you have sure. to make them fight to get a shot. And unforced errors is what oftentimes dictates the outcome of pro matches. Yeah, you, got, you can't take your eye off the prize here, and you got to be real defined with the cue ball. Just because the shot doesn't really, mm -hmm. it doesn't lean easy towards going back and forth. So he should lay up over where he's at now with the cue ball. Oh, that's perfect speed. Good call. Good call. Double J. Bringing it home. Telling you what to do here. <laughs> don't try to do something extra. Take what you have. <laughs> Much like Buddy Hall. Don't play position when you have position. Don't yeah. go past position. <laughs> play position. Uh-oh. This may go a little bit. This may go a little bit. This is definitely a, a little bit of a tester at a big moment in this match. Oh, okay. Nice shot. Buddy was a fun one in the booth, and I never got to work with him, mm -hmm. but I loved listening to him in the oh, booth. Yeah, uh, he's great. Yeah. He had some funny comments. And, Oh, he's got around. something going yeah. three games wisdom. in a row. The cue ball would be scratching. You know, say, well, break. you better say something to it. <laughs> 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 I remember hearing that the first time from him. I was yeah. like, oh, I got to remember that one. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, he had so many all the way. They shrunk the pockets down to four and eight. He said, well, as long as they don't move the center of the pocket, he's okay with it. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> all right, nine seven now. You can see that TPA yeah. creeping upward. Big time for Mika Eminen. Now 8.59 and within a few games of our of our leader, Miesko Fortunski, with a 9-7 lead. Here's another one from Buddy. If you, think, if you think these pockets are too big, you're not betting high enough. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could remember all the ones I that, know, that I uh, wrote them down. Jersey Red used to tell me. Oh, and not man. only what he did, but he would tell me what fats. He loved fats, so Red mm -hmm. did in uh and so he'd tell me all the sayings, of course. And I could tell you some that read that would just make you roll. We got to work, though, and now a 9-7 match. That one's been oh, consistently over that corner. What's the four going to do? nice results there. A couple yeah. balls down, open shot at the two. Not an easy position play, though. No, and it's kind of an in-betweener mark, really. If he yeah. had a little more angle, he could get to the side before the side pocket. If he had a little less angle, he may be able to just kind of straight draw back, even short side maybe on the three. It's a funny shot. I don't know if the four goes as well. So some work and here for the big man from Poland. This is where straight shooting comes in because you're going to have to power up. That's a long swing to travel the cue ball a long ways, and now that four and an eighth gets much bit smaller. Very little margin of error on this one. This is like a straight draw. Let your stroke out. That way you get a little bounce, a little more bounce out of the ball. Oh, he cleaned it. What a nice hit that was. Man. We'll see if he gets rewarded, and he did. He did. And he got an angle to go towards the four, which could be another funny situation. The good thing is the eight's hanging, right? Right. So, Oh, uh, that's – I wouldn't – unless he can't get there, you got to play to the short side of the eight, be able to cut the four onto the eight, right? The five billiards is easy as well. 
He's looking to get underneath the four for all the way up, Mark. That's touchy. I, I think he feels real comfortable about it, playing it from here, because it's just a rolling ball. No, I get it. But, yeah. Oh, he overcut it. Oh, he but, missed it. Yeah, he missed it, and he missed it bad enough to not leave much of a shot. Now, the whole reason to play the shot that way was to make sure you got the three ball down. <laughs> yeah, or, or, and, and land on the position. Yeah. And that really, when you hit balls at speed, normally pocket speed indicates soft, but actually it's slightly harder than that, and it hugs the rail better. If you go super soft, they tend to bound away like there's more grab from that super soft speed. Yeah. Pocket speed. What oh, a wow. shot. Wow. What a shot. He's going to get oh. a bump here. Oh, give him a break. Oh, golly. Oh, poor Mika. Yeah, beauty. Boy, what a shot that was, though. That was exciting. So after winning a couple games, get back in this match and then produce a shot like that. Yeah, pocket speed is kind of like a situational thing. You know, it's not like you don't want to be addressing a lot of shots trying to think pocket speed. That's just mm -hmm. not how it is. The, mm -hmm. the better players open the pocket up with their stroke. Make, you know, the stroke is so clean. Now this is going to be over hit. Yeah. And with an eight ball hanging, this could hurt. He's, well, he's got to go for this, doesn't he? Yeah. Also, on look at that. There's a replay of that kick. On um, Mika's business card, not only does it say shot maker, but it also doesn't say position play or safety play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. Well, that's again, you're really trying to get the four to the to the back rail, and you got to realize with the eight. Now, the good thing is the eight's deep, so he's still got to hit the bank pretty decent to be able to make the eight ball. Right. Um, but that's that kind of you know intuitive right. kind of thing trying to get the object ball to the end rail and you sacrifice the cue ball sometimes i think he's supposed to shoot here i think he's powering up too if it goes if he hits the long rail i can go across the table well let's see yeah. yeah well it did hit the long rail it did go across the table so that he barely hit the object ball for but, it to go that far after but impact. how smart was that though because he's shooting so far away mark you notice a lot of guys myself included i probably add more speed at that maybe yeah. don't hit it near as accurate he just kind of smoothed it in and, and took took his medicine and pretty smart. Big, big shot. shot. Yeah, yeah, that's just what I was going to say. Big shot here. Yeah. Things have changed in this match. That's for sure. Now Meek is going to have to find a bridge and maybe the extension to get at this one. <laughs> uh, super thin hit now. And the good thing, I think if he makes it, unless he... Tries to put side spin, which I doubt. I think he avoids the nine pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to include side spin there. There's no bonus to it. Uh oh. As soon as I said, okay, he's going to be beside the nine, but a little further away from the five. And does he have to worry about the ten, or he just draws by the ten here? No, uh, he'll draw by the ten. Uh, if he doesn't, then he has to worry about it. If he just tries to go top spin. Then the 10 ball's in play. If he goes a little below, which means, you know, he has to pace up the cue ball to hold the spin that far. Well, but that's how he plays good anyway. Look how much closer he got to the 9 than we expected, right? Oh, wow, oh, that man. ball got in the air. Cue ball got in the air. Object ball got in the air. If we could replay that shot, you would see Mika's stroke distort all the way. It was nothing even remotely close to straight on the delivery like he was anticipating. This is an iffy he shot. He just kind of smacked it. Yep. Yeah. That's the one I, I hate it when I do that, just kind of slap at the ball, not really getting any kind of crisp hit on the cue ball. And uh, touch touchy one here for Fortunsky, I'll tell you. And he just missed one like this, uh, you know, a rangy shot with a little back cut. And then this leads away from the seven. That's distasteful, too. So there's a lot of complications with this shot, not just the mental drama of it, but also the execution of a small pocket down there at this angle of approach with speed. And he's been on nine games for a minute with some opportunities, too. It hasn't been like just no opportunities to get to the heel. He's had a chance. Is he just rolling it? Yeah, just trying to bounce a little subtly off the side rail, maybe. No, he's just taking Wow, what a nice pure hit that was. Man, center uh, cut. Center uh, cut. I don't think he got position with it, though. Really? <laughs> he looked there like it, uh Well, maybe, maybe he did. Not. Here on the overhead, it looks like he's partially blocked by the nine but a lot of times this is a not good information so he can shoot it he, it goes okay oh he had to but throw it, it in full. though yeah, yeah he had to throw full. it in with a bunch of right funny he practiced this shot a couple times <laughs> uh warming up right before the match started but it was just pocketing the ball not really moving the rock he could stun this in cross side it's sitting nice to just kind of stun the cue ball down for position 
you're going to see a lot of, like, I think you're going to see, like, a Sky Woodward and them guys bank this in. Just center ball. Oh, he played that. That's going to sell out. Wow. Oh, anything but that. He didn't really anything, you know, if you're going to play safe, much. you have to do better than that if you're going to play safe there. You just can't let Mika shoot at this. Now, he's going at the 10 with the cue ball. And maybe if we can get that front view, too, because this is another shot that will make you swerve your cue if you're anxious at all and you need to go super straight with your tip through the cue ball. I think he probably learned a little bit from that last five ball. Yeah. Not well, saying he'll roll this, but I don't this think. This is the perfect yeah. view. Yeah, much straighter. Much. Yeah. Oh, look at that. This he hits it so full. He's like, get over by the pocket. Okay, good deal. Still a no, tough shot. But a good shot. You know what I mean? Oh, it's, great yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's all he could do from where it was at. All right, well, no spin here, probably just straight high ball. Beautiful shot, Mika. Yeah, that was a big game. Nine nine eight break in a row. <laughs> we got action. We got a one game difference, 9 8 as we hit into rack 18. Oh, Mika's we kind of fought it off here and mm -hmm. saved that timeout and a really smart time to save it. You would think, wow, you're letting Fortunsky kind of. Get a nice time out himself after a, a nice, you know, a mm -hmm. few bad runs here. But mm -hmm. Johnny Archer told me a long time ago, let him let him think about it a little bit at times when you're mm -hmm. making this comeback. 864 for Fotunski, who has dropped considerably. Eminem 838. Mika back at the table. Nine to eight he trails, but breaking the balls and seems to be breaking them better as well towards the end of the match. Nice break off in the last. Broken made three, I believe it was. And There's always heat, right? But you got to feel like the heat's kind of on Fortunsky in this spot. That's how it shifts around. That's why you cannot give up because if you claim a couple games back, then the guy starts saying, well, I got to close this out. I thought he'd give up. I mean, he just fall. I could fall over the edge here. You got to play every rack like it's Hill Hill. Yeah, but with a loose swing. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. the hard part about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you got to have that brain right there, like perfect, and then be able to just swing the cue when you get down on the ball. And then, you know, the, the other part of it is that Fortunsky's had at least three golden opportunities that we you, were used to him cashing in. Look how good that break shot was. Yeah. He's going to end up with a thin one ball. Does go in the side if he wants to take it on. It's not easy. Mika likes the thin cuts, though, or at least he used to. And yeah. He may bank the one across and just kind of go at the five with the cue ball and play a safety. We'll see. Looks pretty natural to me. And just roll the one, go behind, go towards the five with the cue ball like that. Keep it simple. Remember that, oh, he let it leak. He's going to be upset about it. He's got the kick or a piece of the one here, Mark. Well, if he can kick it, I think he's going to kick. Well, if he, if he has a piece of the one, then he has some options. I don't know that he's he does. He's not thick enough yeah. on the one. He does have a piece. I'm right down the line. I see. So, but he, he's not thick enough to really be able to control the one behind the seven. Yeah. He may run behind the five, four here. Got to get the one up a little bit. Oh, he could. Yeah. Okay. Nice speed there. Well, he had like. way more of it than I thought. Yeah. And he put a little right English, so that tells you he could really look at it. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times if mm -hmm. you're tight, you'll stay away from that side spin that deflects towards the ball you're, you're right. snookered on. Right. Well, cue ball pinned to the rail, and it's a long way to get to the one and then controlling the one. It's not an easy shot here for sure. Would you float if you could see the one? Could Can you cut the one and kind of float it by the nine to the end rail and just kind of try to come back towards the eight with the cue ball? Maybe get the snooker with the nine? It's an awful, it requires an awful pure head. I really like this decision, though. Yeah, that power. was a smart shot. I gave up a shot, but still a smart play. There was a lot of ways that turns out more even more favorable than this. Remind me a little one pocket there, that kind of shot. Mm -hmm. Something that Mika has played a lot more of the last few years. He's played many one pocket tournaments. Not the huge, huge entry fee ones, but you know he's played a lot of those three and five hundred dollar entry one pocket. And I tell you what, he's tough. 
Now he's going to kiss the four. He's trying to simplify the shot from distance, just kind of a high ball. Wow. That Boy. takes some nerve, Mark. Especially Crazy. after, Ooh. like you said, making a few mistakes not to get on the hill here these last few games to be able to pull the trigger rolling your ball like that. Yeah. Yeah, that had to feel great to come up with a shot on the four there. And maybe did he think, you know, if I miss it, maybe I get a backdoor safety rolling it like that, knowing Definitely. I'm going to catch the four a little bit. Yeah, he knows he doesn't have to lose. He right. doesn't have to lose from there, if he, right. and he could win. So. All right, this is where, of course, don't get missable. Don't get too thin one way or another on the eight, and try and creep into as close as you can. That's pretty ideal. And that's, you know, I don't know if it's consciously, Mark, or if you do it often enough, it just kind of happens. But I talked about it yesterday with Fetter, how it seems to be he picks out when he can a lot of shots that keep him in that medium zone with the stroke. Yeah. And I kind of feel like it's the same with Fortunsky when he's playing his best. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like Josh Filler, you know, he just kind of inherently uh, sets up for that light stun a lot. Yeah. And it's just what he does real well. He likes it. And I don't even think he has to think about it too much as he goes through the racks, how he's setting up to hit the ball. just kind of happens a lot, it seems like, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and he's not a slow player either. Oh, very fast. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's an enigma. Of, like, he just goes on pure feel. He just feels it and makes it and expects to make it. Emiesco for Tinsky. So that puts him First on the hill now, 10-8. He has a two-game lead now, 10-8. So we head into rack 19. It's been a while, though. It was 9-4, to four, I believe, uh, until Mika started to try and make this comeback. So been waiting some time to get to that game number 10, that being Fortunski, and now we'll break the balls trying to end this match. It was a quality safety effort by Mika that lost that game. You know, it was a, oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he did a lot with that shot. It turned out... It just overran kind of, an inch or so. Well, or if it goes a little bit further, even. You yeah. Know, so it was either way. It was unfortunate. Oh, you're talking about the the, the, the two, last the game. last one. Yeah. yeah. I was talking about the initial safety where he bang, he, he rolled over behind the five and the cue yeah. ball just went a little too far. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about Eminem's yeah, attempt yeah. at a safety right, that sold right, out right. this rack, but and then but, um, you know, but I tell you, his attempt made Fortunsky come with a great shot on the one, rolling the ball in from. Eight, nine feet away. And then get position on the four. That does yeah. not have to happen that good. It did both things. That's the one ball. Yep. Four ball got down. Great chip. Eight's going to get him a little cut off. Little He's ugly. got a piece, though. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how if you can just get control of the table, that's powerful. If you can't break it right now, but if you can just get the first safety stuck on there, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, it's almost like in one pocket, talk about it. If you can just get into the game, meaning they don't beat you in the first inning or two uh -huh. where all the ball's right there, right? If you can right. just get into the game, you feel pretty good about it. And same here. It's not like uh, you always have to get a shot. It's just a matter yeah, of if you can job. get a little control. Really That's good. beauty right here. Really good. So this is that high ball off the top rail. Even though the two's about a diamond up, you can still stick the cue ball. You just requires a hair more speed. He going to the side rail here? I thought he'd go to the end rail here, Mark. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think he has to go to the yeah. end rail. I don't think the side rail is all that good. No, he has to swerve a little bit anyways by the seven, it looks like. Solid hit is what he's looking for. Uh, he cut it a little bit. He needs a little help. Not sure he's going to get it. And he moved the eight a little bit to now to where the three is opened up. So that probably odds are anyways. Last time we'll see Mika Eminen at the table <laughs> in the Bigfoot Challenge for 2023. I'm not going to be that generous. This is still, there's some work to do here. If you can oh, get the yeah. first two or three balls down, I'm with you. I was just saying odds are. Oh, yeah. I'm not for sure, but I couldn't bet against Fortuna. No. Just like any of the 16 players in this event if they had this situation to end a match. Well, or, It's a little off angle here. He may have to yeah. pinch this and take a little more of a cut. Good for him that the six is over the pocket so he can play the five a little freely. 
stop shot. So this this ostensibly is the winning shot of the match here, unless something really goes awry. Yeah, and the pocket plays pretty big as long as you don't let up too much. You know, good medium stroke, it'll slide a little bit. And the same shot he made in the first rack of the whole match. Yeah. Was that, remember how comfortable he oh, pocketed yeah. that ball, that same exact Yeah, the point. two ball you're talking about. He had yeah. to take the one. Remember, he played the one, and he played real simple to take the tough shot on the two. And he hit it dead perfect, opened the match with a break and run, and it looks like after a nice safety, he may end up ending this match. The stretch has gotten him a few times. A little awkward. Now this would be where you'd think he'd grab his extent. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. I think he was avoiding it because his requires a little more work. He has to actually take something off to add the extension. That being the bumper. Okay, just speed control here coming off of two rails when you're stretched. Sometimes it's easy to under hit this. And the speed control has gotten him a couple times in this match. Good speed here, though. Looks good enough, that's for sure. Keep the extension on, though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take that off. You're out of extensions on your time clock, too. Well, I guess he doesn't need it then. He's taking it off. 20 seconds left. And I'll tell you, if he goes on to get out, he can definitely take a lot of positives from this match, leave a few of the negatives behind, and, and maybe be a very tough opponent moving forward, especially because of the way he's breaking the balls. No maybe about it. And this is his first match on the 10-footer with tight pockets. I mean, right. he's going to get dialed in and play, you know, solid after this if he plays this good in the first one. He's yeah, got a real chance to go deep. He's not new to any of these guys he's going to have to face. And I think Mika can take some things from this match being down and move that into some of the main events over there on the nine-footer. Really good shot there. I got the speed perfect. What is that TPA, 882 right now? I think so. Yeah. Feels like it should have been higher. He just let a few things get away there about uh, three three quarters through the match. The match ball finds the bottom of the pocket. And that's it. That's a great play there from Miesko for Tinsky. Congratulations. And moving on to the top eight. This has been World Class Pool plus, presented folks, by AccuStats. On Ice behalf Man, of all of us, thank you and so long for just a while. Kick off the day here.